This is Joe with JoesAstrophoto.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the color masks in Pixinsight and how powerful they could actually be. I often use color masks when I'm processing my narrowband images with SHO. Um, once in a while I use them for HOO images as well. Um, they're very powerful and can be used to create um, very distinct and different looks in the same image. And I'm going to show you that uh, an example of that today and a quick tutorial on how to use them. So let's get started. Here we have our starless image of the Elephant Trunk Nebula. This is an SHO image, and I have not used the SCNR to remove the green yet because I want the green in there in order to take advantage of the color scripts. You go to Scripts and Utilities and find Color Mask. And the Color Mask Blur, you want to set to 3. And then you'll be taking um, different colors to mask out and then to change later on um, how you see fit, how you want your art to look. So of course the first one we're going to do is green. And so we've produced a mask with nothing but green in this image. And we're just going to set that to the side and we're going to come up and we're going to do the same thing. Go to utilities and color mask for each of the colors. I always set this to three, and then we'll go with yellow. I was hoping not to get as much of the inside in that yellow and more of the outside, but let's continue on and see what we have to work with. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try for um, blue. What I normally do is a green, a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow, and I leave the blue and the red off because the cyan and the magenta pick them up. But what I've noticed is that when you do something with a subtle T like this, uh, the cyan and, and the magenta won't really pick up much. So there's our blue. We'll just keep it right here for now. And we'll go up and we'll finally get our, our last color, red. And so red really, there isn't much red in here. According to it, it's just picking up some of the areas around some of the stars that were removed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that because we won't be using it. And we're going to start with the green uh, because it's the most prominent. Um, sometimes I start with the one with the least amount and other times I'll start with the one with the most. Um, but in this case, we're going to start with the one with the most and we'll apply that mask and it's um, hidden. I had already clicked this off and then we'll open up the curves. And we'll open up the real-time preview, so we'll see what we're doing in real-time. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is click on green and, and start to remove some of the green. Um, I don't want to remove all of the green um, because it'll make the image look blotchy. And here I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. When you bring this down, um, you'll get a lot of blotches uh, where the green was and I really need to keep some of this green because I wanted where it's the green highlights are I'm looking for more of a yellow look so we'll click on red um, because together um, by adding some red and removing some green we should get more of an orangish yellow and I don't want it to be too orange um, I want it 
really the, those highlights to be a little bit more yellow. So I'm just going to go to here, but what I'll do is I'm going to brighten up the image a little bit on the highs. See that that'll bring out that, that yellow just a little bit more, not that much. And then I'm going to lower the lows just slightly, which gives it more contrast. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to now apply, we've done the green. So I'm going to minimize that and drop it down here. So that I know that I've already worked with that, but I don't want to get rid of it because I might want to go back and play with it some more. And then I'm going to have a look at the yellow. And so the yellow is just going to be the actual elephant trunk itself which I do want to make just a little bit more red. But it's also going to change some of these areas here, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And then we'll get another preview screen up and we're going to um, just add a little bit more red. I don't want a lot, but I do want that red to come through uh, with the yellow highlights up and around the nebula. That uh, might be... Nah, that's too much. Refresh that. But I, what I do want to do is just bring up the, the mid-tones of this just slightly. Right there. I've seen a lot of pictures of the elephant trunk nebula, and the elephant trunk looks completely black in the picture. But when using narrow band imaging, um, the majority of the elephant trunk itself seems to be sulfur, and sulfur is a, a, a dark, deep red, um, which is what I'm trying to accentuate here using the color masks. apply that and I think that's really all I want to do um, with the with the red inside of the elephant trunk so um, I will close this preview and take the yellow and minimize it drop it down there and then we're gonna go to the blue we're gonna apply that and we'll bring up uh, Make sure that the, our main image is selected. We'll bring up the real-time preview. And we're going to go to blue. And I, I want this to be a deeper, richer blue. Oh, maybe not too much. About right there. Just in these areas, um, which gives a separation uh, between the dust clouds. Actually, now I'm going to go back to the yellow because that was just the elephant trunk. Close this. And I'm going to reapply this mask. And now I'm going to um, invert it. And by inverting it, I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And it should apply blue to just about everything. Um, all around here. And let me turn on the real-time preview so we can see what we're doing. Oh, I don't want that much. Just, just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. It's real subtle. Um, I'm, I, I've done another one um, that was, was pretty um, vibrant. And now I'm looking to do the subtle one, and that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm using to, as an example for the video. I'll show you the other one as well, and we can compare after. So let's apply that and reset this. Now, my other issue is, is I've still got a lot of green, and I'm not a big fan of green 
too much in my uh, narrowband images. So we could do a few things, um, but I think the simplest thing might be, um, because we're keeping this subtle, you know, let's remove this mask and let's just see what an SCNR does um, on this image. Okay, that cleans it up pretty good. So I'm going to add the stars back in real quick. Um, I'm just going to change the identifier of this to uh, starless. And then I've got my star field right here. And uh, what I normally do is go into Photoshop and save both of these as a TIFF. And that way I can bring the stars back in um, a little bit more subdued than uh, all the way but for now I just want to see what it's going to look like so we'll go into pixel math and we'll just um, put in starless plus ss which was for stars I couldn't use um, just s because that's my sulfur filter I like to keep things real simple and let's just apply this Right. So I think the image would look better um, with a lot less stars or more subdued stars. But for now, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show, I wanted to um, demonstrate the power that the color mass can have um, on your processing. And I don't know if you want to call it art. I don't know. I've heard some people say, well, that's not... Um, a true representation of of the um, nebula but in reality with the naked eye we don't really see color in the nebula this is the way the camera's picking it up and when we use the narrowband filters if we were just to go with what the camera picked up straight from the narrowband filters we would just have a lot of green images so in my opinion um, this is uh, more of it, it's a science and an art and in this case this is more of an art we're gonna look at one that I did with a lot more contrast and a lot more punch and I don't think so let me know in the comments below what you think um, basically I just used the same color masks uh, that I did uh, I just brought out a lot more color brightened it up, added a lot more contrast um, by raising the highs and lowering the lows. And I, I think that I prefer a little bit more of the subdued look to it um, because the elephant trunk pops out more at me. Um, but this actually looks good. I mean, I, I have no problem with either of these images. Um, I, I just think that the I was going for more of the subdued look and a lot of times it's the mood that you're in when you're processing as to how your images are going to come out. Um, I, I've got another one. Oh, that's not, not it. I've got another clone here of how it looked before I removed the stars and just removing green only. And um, it, it looked a little too washed out or um, there just wasn't enough colors for me. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If so, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe as it really does help. And we'll see you in the next video.